everyone. Hello. Nice to see you. If you're new here, hello, my name's Audrey. I am the Salty Psychic. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Hello to all of my saltines, all my returning friends back to the channel. Um, today we're going to talk about something a little upsetting. So um, before we get into that though, let me just remind you to please subscribe to the channel. We're almost to a thousand subscribers. Like the video, please, and share the video with anybody that you see feel fit. And also, I wanted to point out some beautiful jewelry I have on today available for purchase on my website. The website is called Vintage NV. Dot org. This is a four-piece set. Uh, this is vintage Givenchy, Givenchy necklace, bracelet, and drop pearl earrings. So check it out on the website. Check it out. Check it out. Even if you're not purchasing anything today on the website, please go ahead and just sign up for the newsletter. It's fun. I love communicating with you guys in whatever form and fashion I can. So I... I Love just thinking up the newsletters and putting all the information down and getting that out to whoever subscribes for that. So check that out as well, vintageenvy.org. All right. So today we're talking about something upsetting. There's there's no there's no reason to deny the fact that this is an upsetting uh, conversation, an upsetting event. Yes, this kind of thing happens every single day all over the globe, um, but we want to talk about it and, um, you know, just get it out there. Get it out of our system, vent about it, let our feelings out, because this kind of thing could really hang on to, on to you over time and it could make you upset and angry and sad and trigger some of your own emotions. So I'm talking about the Alexi Treviso case. This is the 19 year old young lady in high school who lives in New Mexico. She delivered her own baby allegedly in the bathroom at the hospital. So let's go back to January 26th of this year. In the evening, Alexi went into the ER with her mom with back pain, severe back pain. Um, for those of us who've had kids, we know what that, that, that pain feels like. Um, when you're in labor and you're having that excruciating pain of uh, preparing to deliver a little human being. So um, I will tell you, there's a lot to talk about, but I will tell you, I do have firsthand experience with something very similar to this. Uh, my first husband, we were barely 20 years old. <laughs> that didn't last more than a couple of months, okay? So we were young and stupid. And um, my ex, he had a younger sister who was in high school at the time. And, you know, we were all really super skinny back then. So it's like, Hmm, you see someone's body starting to change and okay, well, you know, she's just gaining weight or she's developing her, her breast area and it's just getting large. Well, I got a call one day from my ex and he said, she just had a baby. What? What do you mean she just had a baby? What? That doesn't, come on, what, what's happening? I was truly shocked. I didn't know my ex sister in law was, she carried a baby boy to full term, and he wasn't a small baby either. I think he was nine pounds ish. So it's not like he was uh, a preemie or any, anything really small. He was a full blown, full size baby. And I'll tell you from my experience with that situation, um, my sister-in-law's breast area was 
so large that it it covered her stomach and you know back then in the 80s we didn't wear tight clothes if you were pregnant you still wore modest clothing where it kind of ballooned out and um it was winter time too i believe when when this boy was born and we just couldn't tell but it's like well didn't the mom know didn't my ex-mother-in-law know because my sister-in-law was just a teenager. She was in high school and the mom, the mother-in-law would buy all the, the supplies, the sanitary supplies and, you know, pads and tampons and all that. There was no period for how many months. So it's, you know, the first thing is, oh, they must have known. They didn't want to tell anybody. I, well, we didn't know. We did not know if my mother-in-law was in denial I could see that happening. And I see a lot of the same behavior and emotions in this case. But I've seen some pictures of of Alexi in in this case. And and she looks pregnant. You know, because her chest is relatively small compared to the size of her stomach. She has a pregnant looking belly. If I saw her, I would assume she was pregnant pregnant in these photographs of her cheerleading at school. So it begs the question, was Alexi failed by the system, by the adults, by the teachers, by the hospital? Where did it go wrong in Alexi's mind? And I've watched the videos of the mom finding out about the baby, and I just find it interesting And I don't expect people to respond to the same way I would respond in that situation. If I found out my child had just delivered a baby, I'd be like, one, I'd be probably screaming, where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where is it? This mom said to to Alexi, you know, like full term, I'm just paraphrasing, nine months Don't you know what happens to girls in this situation? They go to jail. Well, they don't go to jail for having a baby. They go to jail for killing the baby. But the mom didn't know the baby was dead at this point, right? Why would she say that at that point? I'm confused by that. And as a psychic, I ask spirit, my spirit guide, or any, the baby even, someone to come in and explain this to me. I don't understand why the mom said that. Obviously, the mom's in, well, I can't say obviously. The mom's acting like she was in shock. The mom was acting like she didn't know. Was mom in denial? Is there a father? Is there, um, does Alexi have a father? Are they other, are there any other family members that she lived with? Was the mom in denial? The grandma, I guess we should say, Alexi's mom. Did the school know? I mean, as someone that worked in education for 20 years, I want to say that I feel like I would know if one of my students was pregnant. I mean, I worked, well, I did work in college, but most of my career was in uh, preschool, elementary, and middle school, which middle school, yeah, you could have that happen in middle school. Um, Did Alexi's friends know? I'm sure the friends are going to be interviewed and the friends' parents and the teachers Did the hospital fail? You know, I've, I've told you guys, I've worked in a hospital. I volunteered and I've been volunteering in a hospital since Benjamin, my son, was 20 or 20 since he was like two years old. He's 20, almost 27 now. So and I did work in postpartum labor and delivery, pediatrics, um, emergency room. And... The hospital I'm currently affiliated with, um, somebody would typically escort 
the patient to the restroom, but they they would probably first be encouraged to use the bedpan and not get up, especially if the nursing staff knew that the pregnancy test came back positive. I can't say that with 100% certainty, but they would definitely have someone like me, a volunteer, kind of just walk with the person. Here's the bathroom. Okay, here you go. And kind of just stand by the door for safety. I mean, we know what it's like to be nine months pregnant and just, uh, you know, just especially in labor, you, you can't always stand up straight and, and get up off the toilet. It's hard to get up off the toilet at nine months pregnant. It's difficult. So where, where did we go wrong? Where did Alexi go wrong in all of this? Her life is basically ruined now. I don't think she'll spend the rest of her life in prison, but she's going to spend a good portion in prison and she's going to be um, going through hell for a while. And she's going to have to live with herself knowing what she did. Now, she's 19 at this point when this baby was delivered. She's an adult. But she clearly is, is afraid uh, to tell her mom that she even is having sex. She's 19. I've mentioned to you guys about my own daughter. When, when my daughter turned 18, it's like, we knew, I knew, I, I knew she was having sex already. But at 18, her boyfriend was older than her. He was already over 18. So my daughter's like, here's how it's going to go, Mom. Um, yeah, I'm going to start spending the nights at his house, maybe Friday, Saturday nights. You know, and it's like, oh, my God. All right. I mean, you're 18, you're 18. You can, you can have sex. You can, you, you can buy lottery tickets. You can do a lot of things as an adult. You shouldn't have to lie. But I certainly understand what it's like living with family who try and control you. And I'm not saying Alexi's mom was controlling, but I definitely see an aspect of fear uh, in, in the situation, but in their relationship between Alexi and her mom. I mean, my mom's a narcissist. I'm 55. I, honestly, I'm kind of afraid of her in some ways, too. Not fearful of my life, but like, I don't want to hear what she has to say. I don't want to hear her judging me to my face because of something I've done. But a 19-year-old has a different brain than a 55-year-old. Our brains aren't even finished developing until we're in our late 20s. Not an excuse to kill your child. Absolutely not. I am by no means saying that Alexi um, shouldn't be held accountable for her actions. She clearly has disconnected herself from the pregnancy by calling the baby an it. It wasn't crying. It came out. I didn't know what to do. It wasn't crying. So she's not even referring to it as a baby. Can you imagine being a scared 19-year-old? I don't for me personally, if that happened to, for me personally, I think I would just give up at that point and have the baby. There's so many people that would take that baby. I would take in that baby. I hope my husband's not listening. If someone said, hey, there's a baby. The mother's going to kill it unless you come and take it. All right, I'll go to New Mexico. I'll, I'll I will take the baby. As a stranger, I would, I would, I would. That's, that's the kind of person I am. My brother did it. My brother adopted a boy. Him and his wife can't have their own children, and they were fostering children um, in San Diego. And um, 
you know, they had a whole nursery set up. They had been fostering some some kids that came in from Mexico, um, and they were hoping to keep one of those children. But uh, they got a call one day saying, "Hey, we got a teenager here in the hospital. She's not. She's gonna deliver today. She doesn't want to keep the child. Do you want the child?" So, uh, luckily, my brother. And sister-in-law were able to go to the hospital, be there for the birth, and they adopted my nephew. So that's more of a success story. But um, there's so many people in this world who would have taken that child. It didn't need to end this way. There's no reason in this day and age that a young woman needs to do what Alexi did. I was trying to say her last name, but I stopped myself because I don't want to mispronounce it. Treviso, Treviso. You know how I am with these names, you guys. I'm not not super great. So it was a bloodbath in the bathroom. I mean, as as a woman who had menstrual problems my daughter also had menstrual problems and I'm sorry this is going to be a little graphic I'm going to try not to make it too graphic but you know someone with endometriosis and and just uterine problems and <sighs> shit happens women girls young women young girls have had these kind of bloodbath kind of periods before. I've seen it many times and I've experienced it myself. It's it's awful. It does look like a, a bloodbath and not not from having a child, just having an awful period. So I questioned myself saying, okay, well if I was if I was the one cleaning up the bathroom, at the hospital, I don't know that I necessarily would have been given a red flag by that. It's just so, so unfortunate. Where's the father? Who's the father? Who's the, who's the father of this little baby? Did he know? Probably probably knew is he going to be in trouble did he tell alexi to get rid of the baby did she deny being pregnant were they still being sexually active while she was pregnant i mean we know how tiny alexi looks she looks very petite um, and I, I saw the video of her coming out of the bathroom after she delivered the, allegedly delivered the baby in the bathroom. She's walking pretty normal to me. I mean, I know after I delivered, it's like, you, it's like, oh God, I got to get up. I got to get out of the bed now. I got to walk. Oh, yuck. You know, and who knows if, if she tore it all down there. Uh, we know that she didn't deliver her placenta while she was in the bathroom. It's not pretty. Maybe it's her young age that helped her to kind of just do what she did and open the door and walk out of the bathroom. I, I can't imagine. It's an awful, awful situation. So what's going to happen to her now? She's been charged. And I believe her her trial or next court date's October. Um, I saw the video where the police went to collect Alexi at her home um, to take her to jail. Um, the mom was very mother bear protective, which I understand. Um, but there's something about the mom, you guys. There's something about the mom or the grandma, I should say. I don't know. I don't know her first name. Alexi's mom. There's something that doesn't sit right with me. And I'm not judging. I'm trying not to sound judgmental because I'm a mother. And yes, I would do a lot to protect my kids. But one thing I've always told my kids is you, you're going to be responsible for your actions. 
you know, okay, you didn't like your childhood. These, these things happened or didn't happen or whatever. And I'm sorry, let's go to therapy and work it out. Let's talk. But you don't get to use your childhood or the fear from your parents or other people in your defense. It just doesn't work like that. So I can see in the future the, the lawyer or lawyers in the defense are going to say, look, she was frightened. She was scared of the mom. She was, um, you know, whatever. They're going to make it out to be um, that Alexi was the victim. Which, in reality, no, the baby, the, the baby that was born and killed is the victim. And it's going to be interesting to see how this case goes. And stay tuned. I'll try and keep you guys as up to date as I can possibly know. If Spirit comes in with any information, I will let you know that. I can see the baby in my mind. I can see it, him. Um, and some people are going to say, you know, did the baby suffer um, from spirit? I can tell you spirit saying no. And I'm getting the chills right now. And that is spirit's way of telling me. Correct. Yes, Audrey, you just said that. Correct. What you just said is right, is true. So the baby didn't um, he didn't even have time to. <sighs> To really even be born, so to speak. Yes, he came out of the body and apparently there was air in the lungs, but he wasn't really like awake, if you will. He's not snapped into life. No excuse, though. Um, he still was murdered. So, as I said, didn't have to end this way. There could have been a, a, a loving family coming to the hospital to get that baby and to take him as their own. And unfortunately, that was cut short. That did not happen. So, <clears throat> bit of a downer video, but still true crime, still spirits involved. And um, I'll, like I said, I'll keep you guys up to date. All right, you guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. Don't forget to check my jewelry website, VintageNV.org. Very beautiful Givenchy vintage jewelry. Check it out. I'll see you guys real soon. All right, take care. Have a great day. Hey, guys, I'm going to pop on real quick. Um, I just saw some video footage in the hospital. So the alleged father of the baby was there in the hospital when this whole thing happened. He's a young, you know, young kid, same age. And um, mom said she didn't know about the pregnancy. So there we have it. So there is a father and the mom claims the grandmother, I guess, uh, mom, Rosa, I believe her name is, um, didn't know. So it's going to be a long road, but we'll watch it together. Okay. See you guys soon. Bye.